from Tianjin, China. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, we're talking about the big problem with e-bikes. Not the price, but whether they are fast enough. Will you agree with me or will you agree with Dan? Plus, uh, I always thought that meeting a cougar would be a good thing, but apparently not. Also confirmed his inability to sprint. Oh yes, I broke my ankle, didn't I? <laughs> you can win a gold Wahoo kicker bike. Come on, wine. Which is terrifying. A very right. strong opinions on the zip tie. For some reason, that smell, that is indistinguishable between that and stale urine for me. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Visma Lisa bike are still the force to be reckoned with. Between them, the men's and women's teams racked up six wins in just the weekend, including an awesome victory for the greatest of all time, Mariana Voss. Yeah, and we also learned that while cows pose the biggest threat to cyclists of any animal worldwide, something that may or may not be true, of course, well, Anyway, cyclists in Seattle in the US had to wrestle a mountain lion mid-ride after one of their group was attacked. Yes, according to an officer of the Department of Fish and Wildlife, these bicyclists were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Which is terrifying. Isn't it, it is terrifying. Basically? Yeah, uh, I always thought that meeting a cougar would be a good thing, but apparently not. We also learnt this week that e-scooters have infiltrated pro cycling. So this is Rick Bosoit, a regular fixture at the end of Cobbled Classics. His job, effectively, is to chaperone the winners towards the podium. Yeah, now that involved him running slash sprinting to keep up with them on their bikes. But as of Sunday in Kerner Brussels Kerner, he adopted an e-scooter, or e-step, as Dan found out they were called in Belgium. Genius. Although now everyone else has to sprint even faster <laughs> to keep up. And now by Belgian law, like many other countries, that e-scooter isn't strictly legal. Uh, most police are of course turning a blind eye to them whilst policies and regulations are updated for what is still a fairly modern invention. Yeah, e-bikes though, as we all know, are legal, but they generally have a speed limit. Now the interesting conversation that Dan and I were having over coffee this morning is whether or not e-bike speed restrictions should be raised or even removed completely. Fascinating. Uh, so here in the UK and in the EU, it's 25 kilometers per hour the limit, whilst in the US, at uh, most places it's 32 k's per hour or 20 miles per hour. Most places in the EU, you do have the option of electrical assistance up to 45 kph for something called s pedelics but for that you'll need insurance, a moped license, and a registration plate. Yeah, uh, now Dan and I differ on our opinions here. I was the one who brought this up, okay, because I'd seen some stats by TomTom. Tom. Remember them? Barely, <laughs> I've got to say. Uh, these stats I was talking about are the TomTom Tom Traffic Index ranking. Yeah, it sounds blooming exciting. It does, doesn't it? it? But you need to bear with us. Okay. Now, they rank 387 cities from 55 countries in six continents for traffic conditions. The worst in the world for congestion is London. That's followed by Dublin, Toronto, Milan, and Lima, which is the capital of Peru. Yeah, now that is according to the average time it takes to drive 10 kilometers. If you look at average speed, Toronto improves slightly, drops out of the top five worst. Anyway, I was looking, right, at the speeds. They are very, very low in these worst cities to drive in. So 14K an hour is the average speed in London. In London. Yeah. Now, when you go down that list, you do very quickly end up over 20 kilometers per hour average and beyond. And so when I was looking at this, I thought, well, of course e-bike use isn't as widespread as perhaps it should be, because they're too slow. If they were faster, not only would you get all the other benefits of riding an e-bike, like health, and fun, the environmental, economic benefits, they would also just be the fastest way to travel as well. So therefore, we should make them a bit faster. My initial thought was on the danger that this could then pose by non-experienced cyclists being on de-restricted e-bikes. Without wanting to sound too arrogant, on, mate. Uh, on. So I, I kind of feel like I'd be all right on a de-restricted e-bike. Because A, I'm a fairly confident bike handler, yeah, hopefully right. still, and B, I'd actually be acutely aware of what a safe riding speed would be in any environment I'm riding in. What happened the last time you rode an e-bike? Oh yes, I broke my ankle, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh, that's just that's just struck me now. Um, 
But you can remember what it's like to go fast, can you? Yes, yeah, so I still have hills that I sometimes descend, <laughs> Si. Yeah, now, okay, so I'm not suggesting that e-bikes be de-restricted completely, because mm. de-restricted e-bikes, excuse me, are very, very fast, right? Just that the speed restrictions are increased to 30k an hour or 20 miles per hour, which is the slowest speed limit for vehicles in many countries. Now, that feels like a good level to me. And I think that many city bikes are designed to be easy to ride. I'm not suggesting that someone jumps on a time trial bike here, but a big comfy bike with big fat tires and nice relaxed handling is super easy at faster yeah. speeds. I guess talking about the danger of this, if it is change, it's not dissimilar to driving in some respects, is it? In that drivers are far more competent and or considerate and or law abiding than some other car drivers. But the one constant amongst people driving a vehicle on the road, barring a few reprobates, of course, is that you have to have a license to do so, i.e. you had to pass some sort of theory and practical test in order to get on the road in the first place. Yeah, pass a test and then forget it all, in many <laughs> cases, um, and certainly don't drive like you've ever been taught. However, the point is there, I grant you that one. Would I be for or against having to have a license plate, insurance, and some sort of proficiency test in order to ride an e-bike? Proficiency test? I'm fine. That's okay. You think like, that'd be that? cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think I'd. I got a distinction in my cycling proficiency test. When Did I was you? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And there was an option of a distinction in mine. It was either pass you, you or mean fail. You just, You didn't get one. They basically said I was so good that they gave me a distinction. Wow. Well, yeah. I don't know if I believe this. You've yeah, never mentioned this before. <laughs> so, there's some stories still to come out <laughs> lately from my murky past. Anyway, but as for legislation, okay. I just think it would put people off, right? So absolute no to that. And it's something that is brought up regularly by anti-cyclists, and rightly it's batted back by everyone, whether it's police, governments, whatever, has just been completely nonsensical. I'm not against a license plate personally, as in if that changes the restriction. Like everyone can ride an e-bike restricted to 25 kilometers per hour. If you want to go faster, then you have to have a license plate. And I wouldn't mind doing the test as well, like you, because I also think I would probably pass it You'd with a distinction. <laughs> uh, yeah, I th I'm not sure I, it's done. I mean, I'm not a guarantee. I did used to crash a lot, didn't I, when I was racing a bike. Uh, speaking of crashes, that is the really big issue here. You are a very experienced cyclist, Si. Thanks, mate. So you're saying I'm old? She's not experienced enough that to way, turn my phone off. Oh, my goodness. What How long shopper? have you been doing that for? Uh, it's like 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, you are getting old, is yeah. what I was saying, and yeah, you're silencing right. your phone. But I don't think you'd appreciate what it's like for many people that are new to cycling. It's a bit like me trying to do cross-country skiing, for example. The stats don't lie. A story on our website about a study from the US showed that head injuries among e-bikers has increased 49-fold in five years. Whoa. Uh, yes, more people are on e-bikes now, but the rise suggests they are more dangerous. Yeah, now the authors of the study, we should say, say that e-biking isn't dangerous, mm. it's just that helmet use is too low. Or that US e-bikes are perhaps too fast, maybe. Well, but, uh, but even the European ones, in the wrong hands, can of course be dangerous. Uh, the study showed how there's been a huge rise in the fatalities among the over 60s due to e-bikes. Yeah, again though, that study also shows that it's down to a lack of helmet use. Something that is not popular in the Netherlands, where that study came from, because they aren't typically mm. needed. But yes, I take your point, there is a risk, I guess, to being able to ride a little bit faster than you. So usual. I was right, is what you're saying. E-spike speed limits are correct. Well, no, yes. I mean, probably they are, aren't they? I just feel that more people would use e-bikes instead of driving, which is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Plus, I also think that people could feel more confident being able to go at the same speed as motorized traffic. And even in turbo mode on an e-bike, it's not like jumping in an F1 car, right? The power from an e-bike is very controllable mm. and it you don't have to go fast unless you're comfortable with it. Would you ride one, an e-bike, if it went faster? I'd be tempted with a 45 kph speed pedalic. With a license plate and the insurance that goes well, with it? Well, the thing for me is, what would the cost of the insurance be? That would be the big deciding factor. <laughs> Who'd have guessed it? Damn tight-ass Lloyd. It's the only question mark is cost. But I kind of feel like I need to defend myself you here. You do, yeah. I'm not tight. I just appreciate really good value for money. Isn't that what tight people say? Probably, yeah. Don't yeah. waste it. Hear yeah. me out, though. Right. I kind of have to work out how many extra journeys I do by bike and therefore whether or not I could justify the extra outlay of the insurance. I'd also have to take into account the cost of the bike in the first place, yeah. I guess, because I haven't got one I use Lorraine's, as you know, which is likely to be far more than my current car is worth. 
Okay. Well, that's fair enough, actually. Like, those are legitimate reasons. They're the kind of reasons that you make, that anyone would make mm. before a purchase. I need right? to start a spreadsheet, is what I'm saying. I might go a step slightly further than me. There are times for me, right, when I would choose to commute to work by train instead of cycling, various different reasons. And I actually would choose an e-bike on a lot of those occasions, I think, if it assisted me up to 45k an hour. If it did, what would be quicker, train or bike at 45k an hour? Well, I think actually it would depend on whether or not I could control my sweating levels on a speed pedal. Hot on the train, is it? <laughs> no, no. So, so the train is about 30 minutes door to door, right? a bit less, but I don't have to like get changed or have a shower when I yeah. get there. If I could ride a speed pedal at 45k an hour and not need a shower when I got there, I reckon it'd be close because my personal best on a bicycle is 30, or 29 minutes, 55 seconds, door to door. Crikey. And that was at 40k an hour average speed. Very specific. Yeah, but I definitely needed a shower <laughs> after that. Well, for me, I would say that there are not that many journeys, now that I'm thinking about it, that I would do on a faster e-bike instead of a car. So our local town is within walking distance, yeah. really close. Uh, there are only a few occasions outside of that where I'm traveling to a place that's, I guess, close enough to get to by bike, uh, but far enough away not to walk to it. And on your own, without a dog or a kid. Exactly. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to throw it out to you lot, actually. Uh, we always appreciate your views and comments. We always learn a lot as well about how things are different in different parts of the world and from people in different circumstances. So let us know whether you think e-bike speed limits are too slow. Should they be faster? If so, why? If not, why not as well? So, uh, yeah, I'll be very interested to know. Oh, there'll be some varying opinions on this for sure. I would expect so, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, get involved. We look forward to reading your comments. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with a little shout out to Oya Lazcano. You might remember if you watched last week's show that we looked at his data from winning the Jaén Pareso race and marvelled at both his incredible power output and also the fact that he wasn't an exceptional once-in-a-generation talent. But it wasn't just pronouncing his name that you got wrong, side, was <laughs> no. it? He confirmed his hidden talent at the weekend with a podium in the very prestigious Kuna Brussels Kuna. But unfortunately, he also confirmed his inability to sprint. Ah, bad luck, eh? He could at least have done what Kristen Faulkner did in Omloop Het Hageland on the same day. She soloed to victory from 65 kilometers out, um, and it was a victory that may or may not have been possible, only due to her POC Star Trooper helmet. Do you know what, I might consider wearing one if it meant winning like a semi-classic, like she's just done. I would wear leopard print speedos <laughs> if it meant winning a semi-classic, but alas, you still need talent, mm -hmm. as well as fancy tech or spangly speedos, um, unless, of course, it's an e-bike, uh, which can be so much fun whilst you're doing it. Um, as you'll have seen, in fact, if you watched Hank and me riding the new cargo adventure bikes from Turn, the bike was released last week. It's called the Orox. It is a go anywhere, anytime, carry anything kind of bike. And we had an absolute blast on our winter bikepacking trip riding them. Just out of interest, how much chili did you put in Hank's dinner? Oh. It wasn't me, actually. Can you hear that evil laugh I can, in the yes. background? Yeah, so that uh, is Stefan, our filmmaker, who said that we would need a few spoonfuls of this chipotle paste Teaspoon. that he recommended. Uh, no dessert spoon. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, yes, it was perhaps a little bit more than was palatable. Um, the bike is unbelievable, mm. by the way. It can carry up to 210 kilos. Gosh, that is a lot. It is a lot. And, and the takeaway stat was between me and Hank, we could carry the same volume of stuff as a Range Rover Sport. Really? Yep. F 510 litres, I think it was. Blimey. And that's not, like, we had racks to spare. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Incredible. Um, and then the, you have these giant tyres that just roll over anything. It's not a bike to replace a bike, it's a bike to replace a car. Yeah, it's after your car. Yeah. Uh, some good news from here in the UK, Road.cc reported that a successful police operation has resulted in sentencing, and in some cases jail time, for a bike theft gang. That's right, they used a bait bike. Oh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. That's right, we? yeah, in, uh, in LA, Long Beach, somewhere over was there, wasn't it? Um, anyway, so the police laid this bait bike. By the end of their shift, four people have been arrested, 
and 130,000 pounds of stolen bikes were uncovered. Mm. Pretty good, that isn't That's it? That's not bad, is it? Uh, and a big list of priorities for underfunded police forces. Stolen bikes come quite a long way down the they order, do, of course. Yeah. But this bust apparently saw bike thefts fall from 68 per month to just seven. Yeah, in this one bit of London. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. They were fairly prolific, these guys. Anyway, That's there we go. Good. That's good news, isn't it? It's really good news, yeah. Um, but also frustrating that we can't there can't be more of that sort of stuff. We should put some police out there to bust people that steal my KOMs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's perfectly legal. No angle grinders are needed. Just... Well, you don't know. It might be de-restricted e-bikes, so. Well, yeah. I mean, we probably do know, don't we? Yeah, I think we do. Um, we've got some research now uh, that won't surprise anyone, frankly, but we're going to tell you about it anyway. The European Cyclist Federation have been mining an absolute trove of data from a huge European Commission survey into quality of life. The reason they've been doing that is because one of the questions, or a few of them, are about cycling, basically. Yeah, they've shown that there is a correlation between cycling infrastructure and cycling rates. The message being, build the bike lanes and the people will cycle. Also though, you can see from the data that cities with more bike infrastructure are also the ones with higher perception of public spaces. Uh, the ECF, European Cyclist Federation, so they can't say from their research why that is, but perhaps they are linked. That's right, yeah. I mean, you can kind of see why, right? Mm. Fewer cars. Well, I mean, all of that made sense. It did, yeah. Well, yeah, certainly the participation thing, but fewer cars makes places nicer. Yeah. Not specifically that bike lanes look pretty. I think it's probably the true fair call, isn't it? Uh, right, some more racing news now. And I quite like this story, I'm not gonna lie. A team in the US is being sanctioned after the manager asked the team mechanic to pretend to be a rider, get dressed up, mm. put on a face mask, and sign on to the race in order for the team to have enough riders to be allowed to start. Yes, the manager, Danny Van Outer, a familiar name to many in the USA, has received a two-year ban, Whoa. and the mechanic has been banned until September of this year. Yeah, I love it, brilliantly bizarre. You know, I, it, I do. Yeah, it was a bizarre story when I read that today. Totally, I like it when weird stuff like this happens. <laughs> um, anyway, we shall finish with a bit of news from Zwift. Those of you who watched our presenter race at the weekend will know all about the Zwift games, but for those of you who've saved that video to watch at a later date, Zwift are offering a month-long festival of competition in March. Which they've called the Zwift Games, and which they say will be the largest virtual event ever held. Uh, Adidas, Wahoo, Oakley are the, the name sponsoring the event, which is open to everybody. You can win a gold Wahoo kicker bike. Crikey. I mean, uh, I don't know whether it's literally made out of gold. I Can't suspect be. not. Uh, but still, I mean, uh, getting a kicker bike would be amazing. Yeah. But if it was a sprayed gold, That'd be cool. Be well, at least they stay in your home, don't they? But that'd be too bling for me to go out and about with. Yeah, but that's it. You'd be, you just know about it every time you got on your indoor trainer. You'd be like, yeah. Anyway, there's also $10,000 up for grabs in the pro events. Yeah, so basically, there's Zwift Games. There are three types of races, okay? Uh, there's the sprint race, there's the epic race, which is like proper no, long. Neither of these sound up my uh, street at the moment, Si. I'm not entirely sure you'd like the third one either, right. which is the climb events. No, okay. uh, so the pros are like riding or racing up um, Sea to Sky, so Alp to Zwift. Um, and then the sprint event are like shorter races that's like a, you know, you've got to progress through to the final, mm -hmm. basically. Anyway, there's races for pros and there's races for the Zwift community as well. So everyone is invited to turn up and do, do some racing. I'm going give to it give it a proper oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is there uh, any kind of prize for best DS? Well, I mean, as Not long as you be that good at that either, as, as long as you don't get a mechanic to sign on, you won't get banned. Uh, let's put it that way. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I right. might get a pro to sign on as a mechanic. <laughs> the pseudonym. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, there's not many pro cyclists I trust to actually set up a bike for me. No. No, I mean, as in a, a, a pro to sort of just pretend that there's some randomer. Pretend that they're Dan Lloyd. Mechanic. Yes. <laughs> Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. Actually, just before we get on to hack forward slash bodge, you might have noticed we are sporting some brand new t-shirts. There's quite a big race being held in Tuscany this coming Saturday, two races in fact, and a sportive on Sunday. Uh, and we are celebrating with these new designs, which you can find over at globalcyclingnetwork.com, shop at the start of it actually, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, uh, along with a few other designs there as well. Your support will be very much appreciated. Speaking of KOMs being stolen, that was one of yours, wasn't it? It was, I know. Quite a long time ago now, already. 
What, that you set it? A fa- well, I say it's a fading memory, it's not really. I mean, you set it before Strava was invented, but Wout van Aert took it off you. Yeah. Was it last year or the year before? Three... Oh, really? Ago, oh, yeah. gosh. That's why I'm seeing it. Oh, it's time, is, time, time is passing quickly, isn't it? Right. Anyway, okay. back to the matter in hand. Yeah. Our first hack, or bod, we will decide in a minute, comes in from Malcolm uh, over in Sweden. After climbing to the top of Stoneshead Scania in Sweden, my daughter and I found a saddle on top of a post fastened on a rock. Hack or bodge? Our legs were tied, so we say hack. I mean, it is literally a saddle on top of a post stuck into a rock, isn't it? Yep. Uh, amazing view. I mean, like, like unless you're on a bike, I wouldn't say a saddle is necessarily the most comfortable. No, it's probably, to I mean, th- th- these are better than a saddle. Aren't they? That's yeah. why we use these stools to sit on. But I mean, there's something like quite quirky, yeah, novel about, about it. Yeah. Seeing it, it look, it's like an old Brooks style one with springs on the back, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So perhaps comfier than your average. Yeah, well, I mean, they said it was appreciated, didn't they? Because they were tired. So they said hack. Well, it's either that or a rock, though, isn't it? Hack or rock. Why has no one put a sofa there? Hack or rock. I'm going to go with hack. <laughs> I'll go hack as well, then. There you go. All right, we've got things off to a good start. Uh, Chris sent this next one in. Uh, Chris with no surname. From Philadelphia in the USA. I could understand this is a quick fix, he says, but there was not a cloud in the sky, and this had clearly been left on for a rainy day and it appears to be a plastic biscuit tray, a biscuit tray gaffer taped onto the back of a saddle to act as like an arse saver. I mean if you've gone to the trouble of gaffer taping a biscuit, mm. empty biscuit tray to your bike for when it's raining you might as well leave it on for the next time it rains right? Well I think I'm with Chris on this one. You have time to think about it after doing a, a bodge like this. But if it's a day where it's raining, you haven't got yourself anything prepared. Well, yeah, I mean, could just get one of these, though. Si. An R saver with GCM bit on it. Yeah, you could. Well, actually, you can get that free if you buy our maintenance book. Ah, okay. Well, we've got yeah. that down here as well. That's why it was left there for you, I think. So there we go. At least there's someone a, knows what's going on. There's a yeah, plug get for a you. a proper ass saver for free by buying the GCM road bike maintenance. Um, Book. I well, that, I don't know whether it's more effective, that R saver, as in like an actual R saver, but it, it does look a lot better, better, doesn't it? It looks yeah. a lot better. Um, I'm going bodge. Yeah, no, I'm going to go bodge. Uh, I mean, gaffer tape is, uh, I mean, it's not as bad as zip ties, but it's pretty bad. Yes, it? it is. You're saying gaffer tape's not as bad as zip ties? Well, you're less likely to injure yourself on <laughs> gaffer tape. Crikey. I hate zip ties. Anyway, right. Very strong opinions on zip ties. Well, I really do, yeah. Uh, next up, this came in from Birawa Wisnu over in Indonesia. Uh, I make my own carbon fibre rear derailleur in a cage from a carbon fibre plate that I bought online for $5. And I shape it with drill and drill, and this saves me 16 grams of weight, and I can make two of them from one plate. That is cool. Very good, yeah. Like I'm already six, saying hack. Yeah, I am. 16 grams saved for five bucks. Well, two dollars fifty, in fact, I see. I like the old anodized jockey wheels as yeah, well. Yeah, that is super cool. It reminds me of my mountain bike days. That is super cool. If only you could replace both sides with, oh, yes. uh, with carbon fibre. That would be that'd be that'd be 32 good, grams. There or thereabouts. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, once you once you're buying sheets of carbon fibre, there's no limit as to what you can like put mm. on your bike. Do your own handlebars and everything. Why not? No, I'm, jo- I'm joke. That was a joke. I think that's great. That's a hack from me. It's a definite hack from me, that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll finish up this week with this one from Nick in Bristol, close Bristol! to Sai. Oh, yeah. Having run out of small vases for spring flowers, we have made use of one of our old bidons. Uh, now used for an old thing. Got to be a hack, right? Uh, no, that is a bodge. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's obviously lovely that you've got daffodils in your house, but um, sat in a this is bottle. this is quite similar to the first one for me. That that's all right if you realise that all the other vases are already currently in use until the next day. Go out to a charity shop, get one more cheap vase that looks good. That is a good point, actually. There's not a bead on. Yeah, I mean you don't need to spend t- mega bucks on vases. I, I know it's not a it doesn't need to be a long-term solution because those flowers aren't going to last that long. But you, every time you look at those flowers, you're not going to see the flowers. You're going to see the, <laughs> no. you're going to see the water bottle that they're stuck in. Yeah, I agree actually. And given that a charity shop vase is probably cheaper than a water bottle, yeah, you know, it really doesn't make any sense at all. I'm really sorry for that one, Nick. Um, given that you are a local to uh, to us, uh, I'm going to say bodge. <laughs> 
Bodge from me as well. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, it's now upload.globalcyclingnetwork.com that you need to go to uh, to upload your hacks and your bodges, and you're welcome to the GCN shows. You want to hear something really weird, right? Go on. You know the small daffodils that are called like Narcissi, whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, most people, I think, think they smell really nice. Uh, for some reason, that smell that is indistinguishable between that and stale urine for me. No. Yeah, 100%. I walk into the room, I'm like, oh my God, why is that smell? And, yeah, and then I look around, and I'm like, oh, it's them. Narcissi again. How weird. Yeah, I hate this time of year. So yeah, they're banned from my house because it makes it smell a wee. Treat. two new stories today, Si. Yeah, well, that one is a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If that makes it into the show as well, I'm mm. pretty surprised. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Camelback water bottle uh, that currently doesn't say GCN on it, but we got an update. They've been shipped. Have they? Yep. Shipped or air freighted? Shipped. Okay. So, yeah, but I mean, as long as there's no blockage in the you know, sewers okay. canal, then yeah, we'll be all right. So, yeah, they're on their way. On their way. Uh, this was the photo that we gave you last week. Um, this was um, Chris Hamilton. Yes. He's got it in quite the face, isn't he, really? Yeah, he, he's got a proper gape on his mouth, trying to suck as much air in as he possibly can and on a climb at the front of a group. Uh, our winner this week is at I Like Poland 2637 who put Chris Hamilton saying, Car back! <laughs> it does actually look like he's in the middle of shouting car back. Do you remember there was that scientific study uh, that said that you absorbed more oxygen if you stuck your tongue out? I don't when you, remember when that. You had your mouth open. Yeah, it was, there was like that's why all the French pros were sticking their tongues out. No. For yeah, apparently. And it was was it disproven? I can't remember. I mean, it must have been because otherwise everyone would write all their tongues out. Well, this is it. Yeah. What with that and your POC helmet, you'd be um, you'd be going way quicker. We um, we once did a caption competition for Thomas Vauclair's tongue out, didn't we? And they had to cut it because we weren't allowed to use the caption that we came up with. It was honestly, it was the funniest thing <laughs> Dan has ever said on this show. It was the best <laughs> caption. And it got cut. Yeah. Thomas anyway, Berkler. moving on to this week. I'll get in touch with you on Facebook, by the way. I love Poland uh, with your address, and we'll get a bottle sent out to you. Yeah. This week's photo is of Wout van Aert on the podium of Kuna Brussels Kuna from Sunday, complete with bouquet of flowers that might smell of wee, uh, and a cuddly donkey <laughs> underneath his right arm. I will get you started. Uh, please welcome the latest ass saver, Wout van Aert. There you go. I mean, when I saw Wow Van Aert holding a donkey slash ass, I thought that, that is ripe for some good... Uh, good I'm caption. pretty sure I might have used a similar caption in the past because they always have those donkeys at Kuna. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, if you think you can beat Dan, then uh, put your witty caption in the comments section down below and we will pick a winner next week. We will shortly let you know what's coming up on GCN through to Sunday. But first up, we've got some comments starting as ever uh, from some underneath last week's show. Neil Daniel 8232, get Killian on the presenter roster. So good to have him on. He was a legend on the 30 and 30 rides uh, he, that he led. Loads of banter and created a chilled atmosphere. And there were quite a few comments along similar lines. Quite annoying, frankly, that someone that doesn't present that much just comes straight in off the bat and is good. And it's really, really good, good. Yeah. I mean, I did my best to make him look rubbish, mate. But, Intimidate you know, him. Yeah, basically, obviously, um, didn't work. Just, uh, no. Yeah. Although uh, Killian himself got involved um, in the comments uh, to say, I thought Killian Murphy, the famous actor, was doing a better job than this of representing us Killians spelt with a C. And I actually have some stats for this. Surprise, surprise. In 2002, before Killian Murphy was famous, there were 99 Killians born in Ireland that year, spelt with a C, and 100 Killians spelt with a K. But in 2022, thanks to Killian's Murphy, and Kelly, there were 316 Killians with a C born in Ireland and only 36 Killians with a K. So um, so I think what Killian would like you to know is that his name is spelt with a, with a C. Cillian, yes. basically. Is what <laughs> yeah. Just think Cillian and then you get there. There's the things that that guy can come up with in terms of stuff, it's just ridiculous. Like sometimes I write to him, he don't happen to know this, this or this, and within an instant, I mean, he can't be just going to look it up. It's stuff that you can't find online. And he yeah. just comes back with it. He must have spreadsheets galore. So fair, I'm, I'm mildly fascinated with the uh, with the baby names. Top 100. Um, yeah. yeah, basically Simon. Are you trying uh, to say that you're on the same wavelength as Killian? No, I'm just saying that that my name has plummeted has so it? far out of the popular. Oh, you're going to sound names. old soon then. Yeah, yeah, ba yeah. Basically, like my my name is like you know 
I don't know, what's like an uncool name? Barbara. Yeah, basically Simon's No, I'm just of Bar- offended every Barbara watching. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think it's... No, I was just saying there's certain names where you, you just, you get a sense of Well, they of go in and out of age. fashion, don't they? Yeah, and uh, I think there was like one Simon christened in the UK last year. No. It's that uncool now. I haven't got my computer on silent either. Two amateurs. Uh, right, these next comments came underneath the video that Si talked about earlier, where Hank uh, got a mouthful of spice, in effect, the turn <laughs> bike. Uh, Mam Tor is, no- oh, sorry, this comes in from SPR Low. Uh, Mam Tor is known as the Shivery Mountain. It lies on the geological fault between the Dark Peak Gritstone and the White Peak Limestone. Mam Tor shivered faster than they could repair the road. It's quite dramatic mm. out there. So this was like a main road in the UK that eventually they gave up repairing and it's now like slipping away into oblivion. But you can get a bicycle up and down there. Just about. Um, Alexander Snyder said, uh, man, this bike is made for Seattle. Carry groceries on the weekdays, hit the Cascade Mountains on the weekend. And actually, yeah, because there's room on the back of it uh, to carry some kind of cougar, Mm. uh, like, you know, (sighs) anti-cougar device. Well, as Julian Allen pointed out, uh, there was enough space on there to carry the world's largest sunglasses for you, Si, it's if true. you so wish. Oh, I mean, they were on my face for quite a lot of it. But uh, but yeah, when I took them off, there was actually a dedicated compartment that I uh, used to store said sunglasses. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> under the presenter race, um, there was a lot. There was a lot of love for Ollie Bridgewood. Rightly so, because mm-hmm. that was quite the performance. Um, I picked this one out, though. Sepster said, uh, being a huge Ollie fan since joining GCN, I was almost brought to tears when he accomplished this. What a story he's brought us. Love it. Also, kudos to Alex and uh, Cy, I think that is, yeah. for the efforts in this. Well done all. So, uh, so yeah, thanks very much for that, Sepster. Dominant performance and race there from English-speaking GCN, wasn't it? Well, it was. Like the Lisa bike of GCN. Well, it was. It went off. It went our way. Uh, poor old Sebas. He was on his own, was he? It, yeah, he was on his own, and basically, he like. I still wouldn't have put against him, but you know. But anyway, there we go. Uh, also, in the same video, Pep eight six nine one. The only disappointing part of this was that it wasn't narrated by Dan. He can't even speak properly. Uh, it doesn't write that. That's me saying that. Um, sitting in a comfy lounging chair with his feet up, sipping on a beer. That would have been an instant classic. It would actually. It would have been good. Um, and then uh, Flip Fonte, thank you for bringing the fixed gear world back to your channel. I've skipped a video just in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, this was Man on how to ride a fixie like a pro. Uh, so Flip Fonte said, thanks for bringing fixed gears back to your channel. I ride my fixie every day, rain or shine. It's simply my best companion. Practical, straightforward, and loads of fun. Mm, well, that does cool. sound like quite good for a companion, doesn't it? Uh, speaking of fun, we'll let you know what's coming up on the channel now, shall we? Yeah, uh, we should. Tomorrow, yeah. if you're watching us on Tuesday, Mountain Bike Skills for road a- Roadies with Blake. Was it bunny hopping he was teaching us the other yeah, day? Yeah, so he taught us how to bunny hop. I've goodness knows what he's got in store for us this no. time. No, you know he grew up BMX, and I found out this morning as well. Well, didn't, yeah. I didn't even realise he had that background, as well as all of the jumps he does now. I mean, it might explain a lot about his skills. Yes. And power. I grew up here, mate. No, I didn't. Uh, Thursday is E Road Bike versus E Gravel Bike. Yes. Uh, Ollie and Alex talk you through the differences. Uh, Friday, how much does rim width affect your tyres? So, uh, a bit nerdy this one, but also, I'm really proud of this, mate. I've invented a device that allows you to ride a bike without knowing what the bike is or what's on it. Bodge. No, it's good, mate. Honestly, it's brilliant. It's been one, it's a blind testing is something we wanted to do for ages, and I've invented something now. Right. So, yeah, no, check it out on Friday. Um, on Saturday, Connor has got his hands on the world's biggest bike, uh, as in the biggest bike that you can buy. It's too big even for him, but somehow we managed to get a hank on it, mm. so goodness knows what happened there. Uh, and then on Sunday, uh, hot off uh, his uh, stupendous victory in the GCN presenter race, Ollie uh, has been trying to hold onto the wheel of a pro cyclist uh, on a flat road this time. See how he gets on. He should be all right, surely. Wow, he's pretty fast, pretty fast dude. Mm. What, the pro? The pro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, ch- keep your eyes on GCN Race, and we are hoping to get a preview of Strada Bianca out for you this week. That race taking place on Saturday, of course. So one last reminder, uh, both these tees available on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got an exclusive interview with Mark Cavendish, so haven't we? We have. We have, yes. Um, that we got from Alain over at the UAE Tour. Yeah. It says that cycling has changed beyond recognition from when he first started racing. So keep your eyes out for that as well. It's probably because you're not doing it anymore. 
Well, yeah, I, I'd imagine it's changed by virtue of being faster, so there's no way I would ever have been there <laughs> anymore. Uh, thanks a bit for watching, and well done if you've got through to the end. Absolutely, Give yeah. Give us a thumbs up.